welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I have a crazy brew challenge from Patreon subscriber Lux Ferris, who wanted to see a Bubbling Muck Storm build. This is specifically not a blue deck. I have played Bubbling Muck on the channel before. It's just high tide but black. Until end of turn, whenever a player taps a swamp for mana, they get an additional black. I've played this alongside High Tide and all the Snap, Cloud of Fairies, Untap Your Lands kind of stuff before. That video is on my channel if you want to go look at it. This is specifically something different. And the engine I'm using is Candelabra of Tanos and Cabal Coffers to try to make this bubbling muck big enough to exsanguinate my opponent for lethal. There's some stress on this deck in deck building. Originally, the idea was a Necropotence deck that used Emergence Zone to go off with a handful of cards. But what I came to was Necrodominance wants you to have Dark Ritual and go very quickly. But Bubbling Muck requires you to have a bunch of lands in play to be useful. And land drops are one of the most fiercely gated resources in the game of Magic. You get one per turn unless you're really breaking the rules and breaking those rules is kind of hard and specific to do which is why i'm playing for exploration let me play an additional land each turn life from the loam went in and out of this deck a million times i settled on two copies eventually because keeping cards flowing when you have exploration this is basically like taking extra turns in terms of getting ahead on the storm count or storm turn resources for protection, I've got three Veils and three Thoughtseizes. Thoughtseize can be used proactively to slow my opponent down, take some pressure off. I could Thoughtseize something like a Psychic Frog and buy a bunch of time. Veil of Summer protects me from Orcish Bowmasters, which is really important because my deck is built around Infernal Contract. Draw four cards, lose half your life, round it up. You die pretty quick under that if someone has a Bowmaster. And basically, we're... Kind of a lands deck, got a little lands crop rotation value package, Wasteland, Bajuka Bog, Blast Zone, two Urza Sagas. But these are primarily in service of getting Cabal Coffers and Herborg into play. And then the Candelabra gets better, Bubbling Muck gets better. And then Beseech the Mirror can find more Bubbling Mucks, more Candelabras. It could draw four cards, or it could find the Exsanguinate. You can't bargain and cast the Exsanguinate, but you could just... Diabolic Tutor, pay four mana, put this in your hand. And if we're off, it'll be fine. And in the sideboard, I have three removal spells and a pivot. We've got Witherbloom, Chain going on over here, Leyline of the Void going on over here. This is one of the most dubious brews that I've played in a while, but the concept is fun. And I did put a lot of work into this. There's a lot of different builds. If you check my Mox field, you could probably see the change log. It, it looks crazy. My considering pile is probably crazy at this point. Put a lot of work into this, and it's still probably not going to break the meta. Let's just be upfront about that. But in, as far as proof of concept and execution on the timeline that I have, I'm going for it like this. This is Lux Varus's Bubbling Muck Golgari Storm. I'm on the draw in round one versus a Yorion strategy. Death Attacks is kind of back. This hand is... Honestly, just a little short of being sick. If I could cast this Infernal Tutor, or Infernal Contract, I'd be pretty hyped. I guess I just need one land to do that, though. I will keep this. I play a lot of lands. Imagine queuing into me, and I go turn one, double Mox Diamond, Infernal Contract. Can we do it? Any land? Oh, baby. All right. We're storming. Mox Diamond, discard Bajuka Bog. Mox Diamond, discard Bayou. Fill me up. Zoom, zoom. Take 10, me. Mother of Rune, suddenly a real threat. Potentially game ending. I have a Coffers, and I have access to Urborg. Unfortunately, the double Mox Diamond means that I have not played out any lands this game yet. I have one, so the Coffers does not work, even if I get Urborg. Gotta put a little more time into this. I intentionally didn't include a backdoor with Beseech the Mirror. Like, there's no... Just, like, Shouldred. Or whatever that I could grab here and juke. 
I thought that would have been too easy. I thought about building in a home lay line package to the main deck, which would make the deck better, but it would be too easy. Opponent said, Arg, I saw that deck once on YouTube. I need to Google. Give me a minute. No, you have not. I literally just built this, though. Feel free to go get whatever information you think is going to help you here. That is your right on Magic Online. Let's hope the Thalias are in the sideboard. I'm not very good against Thalia with this deck. I did play around the Wasteland. Spirit of the Lab. Okay. I mean, that makes my contracts worse, and it cuts my clock really short. Second Beseech. What can I do with that? I also thought about putting a Tendrils in the deck for like Beseech lines, but that seemed lazy and too easy as well. Now I'm regretting all of it. I could just pay four mana to Beseech for something. No bargain. What would that something be? There's only one of each basic in the deck, so I would be opening up Wasteland no matter what I do here. Beseech and Bargain for Exploration make two land drops. Could actually be reasonable. Okay, I'm going to try that. That's for Forest. I have to get Urborg eventually anyway. Okay, Forest. One, two, three, four. Cast with Bargain. Get Exploration. Has anyone ever beseeched the Mirror bargained for Exploration before in Magic? I'd be impressed if they did. All right, I've already made one land drop. I get one more here. Here's this one. Just converting some resources into different resources. And like I said, we're very much in brew territory where this is very specifically made to do exactly the thing and no other thing. And that does introduce re weaknesses Elegant Parlor. They're leaving up the Wasteland. Ooh, please tap the Wasteland. The Johnny. All right. Well, I am dead on board, so got to figure this out, which seems unlikely from my position. I'm not going to lie. Underground Mortuary. Urborg. Drawing Urborg naturally lets me crop rotate for something else. What is the line here? I go Urborg, Coffers. I don't have a Bubbling Muck. I don't have a Sweeper in the deck. Big Sanguinate is not going to win from this spot, and I am going to keep this. I can't draw cards. <laughs> I'm going to count my mana, but it's going to be embarrassingly low. I go Urborg Coffers. Boom, boom. Here they are. And I can Crop Rotate for another Coffers. I thought about putting a Tabernacle in the deck, but A, I didn't make room for it, and B, that's not even good here. I Crop Rotate this Forest into another Coffers. I might be giving up a lot of information here on what my deck actually does. No regrets. I'm just going to float a bunch of mana and then concede. But I don't need to untap the other lands. Just the coffers because I don't have muck going. Okay, I can eight, have eight mana left after I besiege. And this is why Infernal Contract's in, but they have Spirit. Like here I would just send a contract and hope that the four cards are good, but I don't actually have an out here. And Storm is, what, one? Just the Candelabra? Or two? Yeah, okay. Even if I had a Tendrils in the deck, it wouldn't save me there. Okay. <laughs> All right, now we, we sideboard. I showed them enough that hopefully they think I'm doing that. And now I'm going to do something different. Veil of Summer, not necessary here. Sometimes at the Texas has Bowmaster. But I'm not worried about that right now. I'm a little worried about Thoughtseize. I like Life from Malone. I don't need Bajuka Bog in the deck. I wonder how hard of a pivot this is. I could just cut candlesticks and exanguinate, and I'm just doing this now. That would also cut bubbling muck, which would let me keep Bajuka Bog. It's still literally a land for Mox Diamond. And they have some candle one candle still in. Okay, we're juking. Let's try this. An infernal contact still draws cards. Beseech the Mirror still finds Wither Bloom or Chain. Okay, uh, this is Disruption, Acceleration, A and B. I'm in. Opponent kept six, or kept seven. I'm about to make it six. Swamp, Thought Sees You. Source of Plowshare, Surgical, Graph Fingers Cage. All right, well, I'm taking Plow. Disappointed they actually have access to that. If they just Insanos... Fire, Surgical, on Vernon Catacombs, they actually get a hit here. That's annoying. Ooh, I do have Wasteland in my hand, though. Or, in the Wasteland is in their hand. 
I could try to walk the wasteland into a underground mortuary and then play out the saga, and that's a game plan. There is the wasteland. Let's see if they want to attack the first non-basic I give them, or if they're going to save it for an Urborg or a Coffers. They didn't see Saga, but it's a good one. Mortuary. Life from Malone. Put that on top. Let's go. Okay. Mox Diamond. Discard Forest. Life from Malone. Target these things. This does give them a target for Surgical, but... I'm mostly not worried about it if this resolves. Like, they can take my catacombs. I still get forest, and then surgical's gone. Yeah, sure. You got it. Now they see Chain of Smog. They know what my real plan is. This is why I didn't discard Saga to Mox Diamond. I actually want to keep that one around. Like, they could have let me draw three here and then take out the loam. Instead, I draw one, and I get to keep the loam. And I think now that I'm ahead with the Mox Diamond, I'm fine letting them spend a land on... There's a saga. Arid Mesa. Basic Mountain. Oh, am I getting Blood Mooned? That would be stupid. Yikes. All right, sure. You got me. And I have Mox Diamond and both basics, so this is not that bad, but it is still annoying. Uh, it also makes it hard to cast Beseech the Mirror. I am not going to dredge Loam. <laughs> Magic's easy. I'm going to target myself with Chain of Smog. Discard this. I would like to copy the spell. Yes. Same targets. <laughs> now do I juke back? Okay. Uh, that was fun. I was worried about that Magus for a minute. A Candelabra does filter colored mana through a Magus. I do have my Abrupt Decays in. I have my Juke combo in. And of course they have Magus and they saw me trying to Cabal Coffers them out game one. That makes sense. We have won a game, and it's still the first match. Scoreboard. I think I'm going to cut Bajuka Bog and add one Candelabra. Okay, what does my hand do? I've got two crop rotations in Loam, in Engine Online. This can access Blast Zone if I need to get grindy. I can blow out a Wasteland by rotating away the target. I am going to keep this. Flooded Strand revealed. And I'm just going to play Bayou and pass. I'm trying to get a Wasteland on the line here. That's a full time walk if they send it. Elegant Parlor. Dump to Plains. Marsh Flats is not Wasteland. We couldn't fool them. A Johnny. Infernal Contract. All right, we got a plan. I can fetch Basic Swamp with this if they play Magus this turn. They're in for three. That's happening. Caracas. Recruiter. Uh-oh. This could tutor Solitude, and then I just... It becomes very hard to with a Bloom combo. There it is. They found the line. I had builds with defense grids in them, but... There is... It is hard to put all the pieces you need into a deck like this one. Ox Diamond. Okay, I can Beseech the Mirror right now with Bargain. What does that do? If I... Fire Infernal Contract right now, I go to 8... You can attack me for four, but I do get to load up my hand. A Mox Diamond, discard Basic Forest. I'm making a contract. ka -chow. Okay. Wither Bloom, Apprentices, unlocked. I could crop rotate now so I don't have to go to discard. I could just discard Life from Malone. I have double Wither Bloom. What does that mean for me? Okay. I am going to discard Life from Malone. I feel like I'm close here, but I'm going to run out of life total. And I'm only close because I used half of my life total. What a cruel world we live in. Blooded Strand. I am very dead to Magus of the Moon here. Oh, Skyclave Apparition? That might be worse. I think that actually is worse. <laughs> my Mox Diamond's gone. I planned this double crop rotation game around dipping and diving under wastelands, and they just never played one of those. Okay, so what do I have to do here? End step fetch. Get by you. I think I have to crop rotate for an Urborg. Blast Zone won't kill anything this turn. Let's just grab Urborg. Dredging Loam is not going to help here. Mox Diamond. I think I'm just dead. Yeah, they have three damage on board. However, I wherever I put this Abrupt Decay, I had a Maze of it in an early build, but ended up not playing that. 
if I could gain one life off of the abrupt decay, I can gain one life off of crop rotation. What does that do? One, two, three, four, five, six. If they solitude, that's five, six, seven. All right, I'll play one of the Wither Blooms out and probably be dead. They literally just have to go to combat, but if they pitch this solitude and gain me an extra two life, that's six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, still dead. <laughs> yeah, very dead. If I had a land for this Mox Diamond, or if they didn't just take a mana off, Abrupt Decay, kill something, gain two, gain a life, block something, would actually buy me another turn. But classic death in Texas, you end up just one mana short on the turn where they kill you. And step fetch. And I don't play a Sajiri step. That would actually be cool here. I thought about it. I, I did think about a lot of things. Most of them just ended up being bad. It was red in the pool. Magus of the Moon. Well, I'm dead. Is that true? Yes. All right. Yep. Nothing to do about this. We might have been able to do something there if I still had my Mox Diamond, but ended up a little short. And not like it was super close. Like I, And by do something, I mean, I would have been able to maybe survive this turn if I still had my Mox Diamond. But, you know, that's magic. On to the next round. We did get a game. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks. And groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play in round two. And I am going to keep this hand. This is on the strength of Urza Saga. And we'll see if that materializes into a game plan. Bayou Exploration. There's a long pause on this. Like they're thinking if this is something they need to force or not. And the life total changed. There is a force over there. Force Pitching Ponder. Okay. No real information gained on that. Except that they are a blue deck. And Force of Will is now one down. That's a force that won't be spent on a Beseech the Mirror this game. Underground C. I did not draw crop rotation, unfortunately, which is my best answer to Entomb. Candelabra. I'm just going to dump out all these candles. Let you know, it's getting weird around here. Troll of Cosidum Cycle. That is not an Entomb. That is an acceptable way to spend black mana in my instep. Good job. We got Underground C with that. Wasteland has appeared. Wasteland's not Psychic Frog. Beseech the Mirror. Called it. Right, underground Mortuary. The Muck. All right, keep it, keep it, keep it. We're starting to have a plan come together. I can untap Underground Mortuary if I want and tap it for black or green by tapping Bayou. Animate Dead the Troll. All right, we're on a clock, but it's an acceptable one. Bubbling Muck in the spot. I think I want to lead on Urborg in case I draw Coffers rather than just fetch a bio out of my deck. I only have the one Surveil Land, and I've already used it. The troll puts me to 14. Currently, my plan is to Beseech for one of the draw fours and just hope I don't die. If I draw a good card, a Veil or Thoughtseize are kind of the cards I want the most here. No, I did not want to see that Wasteland. Disappointing. All right, don't waste me, bro. Ooh, I did draw Thoughtseize. I'm going to play Verdant Catacombs. I'm going to play Bubbling Muck. And they're incentivized to Thoughtseize now, or Wasteland now. Fudge, I really didn't want to see that card. Their Wasteland does tap for black here, which might be what they're representing. They should just fire this off in response, though, which will cost me a lot of mana over the course of the turn. It's not just one for one. It's one for two, four, six. I lose six mana to this Wasteland. I guess it's four mana because I have to spend on the Candelabras to get it, but it's a lot. It's Beseech the Mirror. There's some conversation about Thought Seizing first that I think is reasonable. Okay, so can I, where can I get now? The predictable thing happened. I can Thought Seize my opponent with my floating mana. I can make four, untap three lands, one floating, make another six, untap three lands. Okay, Thought Seize you. 
All roads start with Nazis. Animate to add two lands in the hand. Okay. I'm currently five, six, seven. Okay, black, 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 black. Untap my lands. Black, 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 black. I can currently beseech the mirror with three floating. I could draw three cards, maybe find a bubbling muck. Or if that's the case, I actually want to leave one swamp untapped. Okay. I'm going to draw four cards here. I think I just said three, but it's actually four. We need this to be good. Infernal contract. Come on, deck. Oh, that's good. <laughs> what does this do? Um, does it do anything? I can muck with this. Then this taps for three, untaps all my lands. I don't know if I've actually done anything here, but something's happening. A bubbling muck with the floating black. Glad I left this land untapped. That's actually huge. Tap for three black. I could also fetch here, tap for a green, but I have to use this to untap everything anyway. All right. Untap these three. Now I have nine mana. It, oh, it's actually way more than that because I can tap for green, get two black, crop rotate. Tap for green, get two black. Okay, here we go. Green, black, black. Crop rotation. Eat this by you. Cabal coffers. Does, do you actually make mana here? It costs two to activate you. You tap for four. I end up with four mana in the pool. This is actually worse than just getting a land. I just get another bayou here. I kind of build my own dark ritual. I think I'm supposed to beseech for another draw four. If I fetch first, I end up at two. If I don't fetch first, I end up at three. I'm dead either way. Does that matter? Three. I don't think that matters. I'm going to fetch. I'll get another bayou. And I'll leave a green floating. Beseech with bargain. Why did I leave a green floating? That doesn't matter. All right. Sack this. I draw another four. I mean, this is a spot where something like a tendrils kill or, or some normal way to win. Ill-gotten gains. Just something would be great. But instead, I'm just going to draw four more cards and hope they're good. Come on, deck. Uh-oh. <laughs> I did all that and it's not going to matter. I want my opponent shaking in their boots, though. All right, untap all these. Crop rotation again. Yeah, there's no way out of this. Uh, or, oh, could I have blast zoned for two? Oh, no. Did I mess up? Could I have got blast zone, put a counter on it, then untapped it with candelabra and stabilized? And I'm not winning this game ever. Sad. Okay. <laughs> oh, this deck is a mess. That was cool for a while, though. I think I'm bringing in 15 cards. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to wait a turn to go for it, or and then they hit me with Troll, and it gets harder to contract multiple times. Fought the good fight. Maybe Exsanguinate is just horrendous win con, and we should expect better from a Legacy deck. I would also accept that as criticism. Crop rotation is still good, because I have Bajuka Bog in my deck. Still like contract. Maybe I chill on the contracts a little bit. Or maybe I cut Bajuka Bog and the crop rotations because now I'm interested in Leyline of the Void. Seems weird to cut Graveyard Hate, though, against a deck that can do this stuff. But if I have Leyline, then Bajuka Bog stinks, and I'm going to wish I didn't have crop rotation in my deck. And I do like Thoughtseize and Veil vale to punch a hole. Okay. I'm going to try this. I could play fewer loams, actually, and get one of these things back. Crop rotation back. I don't think I'm going to wasteland them. I can get my Bajuka Bog back. Or the game's not really about coffers anymore. That's worse than wasteland. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely a deck building issue. The fact that I got to do everything I did last turn and Beseech the Mirror twice and did not come close to winning is a failure somewhere. Maybe just trying to drain life your opponent for 20 is not a a win condition these days. I'm going to keep this. It sucks I have the Bajuka Bog in my hand. But I've got A. Looking for B. I've got double exploration. Just shred with this life from below. This deck looks so cool when you're looking at opening hands. And then you start actually executing the combo and realize what's going on. Okay, opponent mold to six. And now they think I'm a storm deck, which is great. Wonder if they'd force exploration again. Knowing what they know now? The answer is no. Let's mill a land? Oh yeah. 
Put that in the graveyard. That makes life from the loam better. And I'll pass. Misty Rainforest. Oh, okay. Combo's here. Life from the loam, target my two lands. There's no way to play around days here. But I'd kind of love if they do daze me, set themselves back a land, then I just play Bog and try to go for it next turn. Okay, we're in there. Blue to Delta, Cabal Coffers. Coffers pretty bad right now. I should just play this other exploration. What am I doing? Bayou exploration. If I get Entomb reanimated, they fetched an island in the end step. That's good news. Cycling Troll. Getting basic swamp. They might try to Harbinger of the Seas me. It is a card they play. Or they're just worried about my one of Wasteland that I don't think they know about. Psychic Frog online. Okay, what do I want here? Thoughtseize or Veil off the top? Beseech the Mirror. Fascinating. Okay, so I can... Cabal Coffers does tap for one here. I can Beseech Sacking Exploration. Try to Thoughtseize my opponent. Just Beseech for Thoughtseize. I could also just pay four for the Beseech. Put Thoughtseize in my hand and try to win next turn. I think that's the line. Cast without Bargain. A clean little days. Pajuka Bog and Jambles. Okay, Bog, target you. I have tested their interaction, and now I have one mana up next turn if I draw Thoughtseize or Veil. We're close. But now they, they got the engine online. Frog's getting a taste. Really wish that was any other card. Another frog. Okay. Thoughtseize, Veil. Thoughtseize, Veil. Don't dredge alone. Thoughtseize, Veil? Shit. Okay, well, I'm going to fetch. And I'm all in here. Weatherbloom Apprentice on the stack. I hope they're scared right now. I don't think they are, though. It's a handful of cards. Chain of Smog, target me. Always yield. Are you dead? One of us is. I would like to copy this spell. Okay. They haven't interacted yet. This is at least one extra life they didn't need to lose. Wow! <laughs> all right, let's go. Getting that daze out of the way. They couldn't daze me on the combo turn anyway, but that was nice. Okay, they know about the juke now. I wonder what was in their hand. That was weird. What if I back off of an exploration and bring a contract back in? Let's try to keep the cards flowing. You don't need the third exploration. You don't even need the second. In this matchup, we might not need the first. Okay, I like this. I'm going to keep. I put this ley line into play. Stops their biggest nonsense. I hope they're on a full send it reanimate line. Uh oh. My Witherbloom Apprentice. All right, back to zero. Gotta, gotta build this back up. Glad I just boarded one of my Infernal Contracts back in, though. That's how you reload. If they take Thoughtseize, I'm even more screwed than if they take Witherbloom Apprentice. Yikes. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Verdant Catacombs, Mox Diamond, Discard Polluted Delta. And I've got a Veil of Summer for your face right now. They've got a Ponder. I can fetch my Underground Mortuary this turn. And I will place Witherbloom Apprentice on the stack next turn. Fetch for the Mortuary. Come on, Smog. Ooh, Contract. I'll put that on top. Might want that in the future. Okay, Witherbloom Apprentice. I've played around days. If they force this, I have the Veil. If they Fatal Push it, I have the Veil. It would be hard for them to get an Archon of Cruelty into play. And if this thing's in play, it's just little cheese value. I can attack for two. When I cast this contract, I drain them. When I cast this veil, I drain them. Okay, they're passing priority. The beatdown begins. The Jukabog. <laughs> Target you. Got him. Okay, uh, Orcish Bowmaster would be annoying here. I'm just going to bog them. And I'm going to pass, because next turn I can contract with veil up. Oh, fetch. They're at 15. A quarter of the way through. But they dumped a force of will, so they're not interested in interaction. I already got that covered. And they dumped underground sea, so they don't want interaction or lands. I guess what they're looking for is threats or maybe spot removal. Cycling a troll. Now they want to land all of a sudden. Basic swamp is online. Draw for turn. Oh, baby, you're in trouble. I'm going to attack first. Is attacking into Bowmasters just insane? It might be, but they didn't have it last turn. Okay, I could fire Infernal Contract and try to get set up. I could lead on Veil, which is kind of stinky. I'm going to Contract. Let's go. I'm here to party. 
Drain you for one. The problem with the Veil is if I play it first, then they could just kill my creature in response. If I play it after Chain of Smog, Chain of Smog has already discarded it and it doesn't matter. They would need to try to Fatal Push or Force of Will my Chain of Smog or my Witherbloom command in response to the first Chain of Smog, which if they just lose one life, they can make sure their spell works instead. Force Pitching Days. Deal. It was a trick. I'm not going to fight over that. Yeah, that was just another shock. Drain you for one and you lose a life off the uh, force. Psychic Frog, I do not care about. Oh, we're so close to glory here. If I draw another Chain of Smog, I can target them first. A Bayou. Okay. Um, I guess I'll lead on Veil and just see what happens here. Drain you for one. This exact sequence... Uh, like the awkwardness around this Veil of Summer is why Chain of Smog is not as popular as it could be. Because an A-B combo that by its own definition empties your hand is pretty bad. Petty Theft in response. All right, I have that beat. That's fine. And now this is a cantrip. Bayou, Apprentice, and Chain of Smog right back in the saddle. I'll discard Exploration, and I would like to copy this. GG's. Okay, we're on the board. It has nothing to do with uh, the bubbling muck combo, but we are on board. Nice. I I do my best with every league on this channel, but some you know this might be an 05 when you register it. I'm just really glad we're on the board. Even if it is with the juke out of the sideboard, the juke is part of the deck. They see a storm combo game one, they board out their removal, then they just die with five cards in their hand with their Bloom Apprentice on the in game two. Like this is part of the plan. Hopefully we get at least one game, one win throughout the league, but we are not going to go 0 and 5. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set. Tournament edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set and a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. I'm on the play in round three with a hand that gets life from Malone going. I will, I'll keep this. I got the Blast Zone in my hand if I need to take some pressure off. I'm going to lead on Delta because my plan is to get the Mortuary and Verdant Catacombs can get either basic. Eldrazi Temple, okay. Relentless beats are coming. Blurring Flesh Raker. My flesh is about to be raked. Mortuary. I don't need Polluted Delta. I'm about to cast Life from the Loam. A fetch for Basic Swamp. I have access to Basic Forest in the future if I want that. But I'd rather have Swamps in play if everything goes my way. It would be a really embarrassing time to get Thought Not Seared. I did have builds of the deck that had four Wasteland, four Loam, and it was just way more of a land stack, but then the combo support was so bad. It was another layer that was hard to, to solve for. I ended up with one Wasteland in the crop rotation package. No spell. That's terrifying. Why not? What are you doing over there? I'm going to draw for turn. Not dredging. Ended up drawing a shitty land anyway. A Verdant Catacombs. Candelabra of Tonos. I mean, the, the buttons are here. The problem is you got to press a lot of buttons to actually win. I have the Coffers, the Muck, and the Candelabra. I also looked at cards like Torment of Hailfire instead of Exsanguinate. It seemed like mostly kind of the same, but worse. I don't know. The biggest issue was it's really hard to line up a big mana X spell with Beseech the Mirror as your tutor. And I could play like Wishclaw Talisman or whatever, but that ends up only costing one mana less while being weak to more things to, if I end up just putting an X spell in my hand. Yavamaya, the other Urborg. I should get credit for that. 
You have a Maya Coffers. Where's Mind Bend when you need it? Okay, we've got a hardcast Null Drifter. That will be difficult to overcome. Okay, I'm going to fetch for Bayou in the end step and hope that I draw Contract or Beseech. I think that's the only way to keep the, the party rolling. Oh no, they're not done casting spells. Thought not, Seer, no! All right, now I think I'm on no outs. Not that I was drawing heavy, but losing my bubbling muck here is a disaster. It does reveal to my opponent the bubbling muck, though, which making them see that and then making them sideboard thinking that that's what I'm going to do when I'm definitely going to be doing Witherbloom stuff in the sideboard games. And they had a little chalice of the void on the way out. Oh, they're not even done casting spells. Also on zero. Sure. I don't play any zeros. You dope. <laughs> don't dredge loam. The bubbling muck. Okay. We were going to lose that anyway. All that stuff didn't matter. Moral victory. Okay. Chain and Apprentice come in. May or may not want Abrupt Decay here. It does kill some stuff. This Veil of Summer has to come out. I can Veil and beat a Chalice on 2 that way, but Abrupt Decay also beats Veil Chalice on 2. What would I keep in if I cut the Exsanguinate? Because it doesn't make sense if I cut the, the Muck. Do I keep a Candelabra? Do I keep one Bubble? In Candelabra, I can Beseech away. I can Bargain it. Oh, I do play zero, so my opponent's not a dope. I take it back. Opponent, you're really not a dope. I'm just making content here. Okay, this is my plan. We've pivoted. Uh, Slow and ugly. I'll keep it, obviously. Yeah, the biggest crime of this hand is that it needs a land to even use this Urza Saga, because Coffers just doesn't do anything on its own. I can Chain of Smog them on turn two and see how far into hell they want to go with me. I also considered a Shadow Spear and building out the Urza Saga package a little much, but that also felt like cheating. They're just firing once upon a time in my upkeep. Okay. I personally would wait for my turn and my draw step to do this with more information, while also denying me information, but you can do what you want. Bayou, because I can't afford to fetch basic Forest, even though they're a Wasteland deck. Urza Saga's in play. I would love to just draw a fetch land or some source of black, or green. I would take the basic force. I'm not even going to be picky here. Urborg is my best draw. Come on, deck. Aussies, tilt. Not helpful. Here's Cabal Coffers that taps for negative one. Less Shrike or Thought Knot. I'm going to take the Thought Knot, and I will sadly pass the turn. And Ursa Saga is going to die here, too. I don't play an expedition map, which would actually solve all my problems right now. I thought about it. Again, hard to find room in these decks. Here's the cavern. I expect the Flesh Raker to arrive here. There it is. Taking some beats. Come on, deck. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I can float colorless and then crop rotate this into Urborg before it dies. It's going to go anyway. Give me that Borg. Urborg. And then I can tutor for the one candelabra I left in. I can end up drawing the cards here. Okay. I black free swamp. I control. That's three. Untapping these lands would be the same as not untapping these lands. So I'm just going to draw four cards. Okay. Uh, I have them dead next turn. I'm at seven. They could play Null Drifter, attack me for five, six, seven. Oh, no. Uh, three. Shit, I'm dead. <laughs> I deserve this. Um, okay. That's disappointing. Okay. I needed to draw a land to go with this. Okay. Uh, maybe they won't see the line, but I am just dead. I needed to high roll there regardless, so I'm not going to feel too bad about that, but you know, one more life point would have changed things. If I'm just at 8 instead of 7 here, I think I win. They found the line. I take one from this, I take one from this, and then they just attack. All right, GG. Weirdly close. On to the next round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the drone round four with a hand that even I can't keep. Uh, that's too many candelabras. Mulligan. 
This hand looks similar, but the upside is different. I have disruption and protection. I have to draw lands to get out of this anyway. I think I keep this and the exploration is weird because if I draw fetch land light from the loam over the course of the next few turns, the exploration is good or else it will be bad. All right, I'm bottoming exploration and we'll see what happens. A basic island. I was about to say an ugly basic island and try to make judgments based on that, but then I stared at it and I just got lost in this art. This art rules. I really don't like this frame. I think it looks corny. Uh, the way that they decided to represent the name and type of this card, but if I ignore that and just look at this, it's really mesmerizing. All right, not an ugly island. Though, when they played it, I got this weird, like, ping in my head or that was like, this is a control player island. I'm going to thought seize them off Bayou. Whether I play the Mox Diamond or the Bayou is, do I think they have Prismatic in, in their deck or Wasteland? Turns out the answer is literally both, and they're both in their hand. Shit, I'm so dead. Uh, I have to take this standstill, though. <laughs> Holy smokes. I guess the flip side is I could just Thought Seize the Prismatic ending, which I can't do otherwise. All right, I need lands here. Shit, we're dead. Playing against standstill. I mean, if a deck is going to let me get my engine online and do what I want over a long game, it's this one. I just need to find lands. Right, we're in. We're in. Always had it. They said in the chat they're a fan of the channel, and uh, I can now see the influence. I think I have to get the Mortuary here and try to smooth my lands out. Yeah, let's go. Put that on top. Playing the game. And I'm going to give them a Candelabra, the Prismatic Ending, because eventually I want to play this Mox Diamond, and I want that to stick around. Cycling Timeless Dragon. They got a clock now. Terrifying. Timeless Dragon is the first card we've seen where I'm glad I took the standstill. Okay, there's the ending. That's out of here. It would be sick if I could, like, tap Verdant Catacombs, untap it, then sack it in response to get another land. Obviously not how the game works at all, but it would be sick if I could do that. Oh, yo, speaking of sick, hook me up, send me to the moon. Infernal Contract. Please don't have Hall Breacher. We know one of their cards in hand right now. If they force blue card and I get a him to truck off this, I'm okay with that exchange. If they just cast cast Daze, Daze is in your standstill deck. Oh no, that was horrific. Daze and standstill, gold. Mystic Sanctuary is live now. I don't think they'd want back Daze or Prismatic Ending on this board though. More likely a Meticulous Archive coming. Basic Planes, all right. I mean, this deck could also just play back to basics, which would lock me out here. I'm in the awesome position of can't play around shit, which is really liberating, but also feels bad. The dragon's here. Ugh. Another Mox Diamond. Life from the Loam would actually bust this game open if it happens anytime soon. I got six lands in play. A forest. Okay. I can cast Beseech the Mirror now. Just put something in the bank. This is just Diabolic Tutor. Stubborn Denial, wow. This is an innovative list. I have considered Days in blue Eye Control decks before. I've played Days in some aggressive Mentor decks. I have never had it in a Standstill deck, and I've definitely never played Stubborn Denial in a Standstill deck before. Exploration, what a middle finger that is. It does bargain away, though. And it makes Drawing Life from the Loam even better. And I'm now dead on board and need a big top deck. Urborg is probably not it. I mean, I can cast a Beseech with Bargain, and then I can Veil of Summer their Counterspell, draw a new card, and see where this goes. I don't think there's anything that would even help here, though. Beseech for Life from the Loam. Okay, they just let that resolve. Hate that for me. Yeah, this is the, the worst part. Uh, if I just had, like, a Shouldred here, I would feel pretty good. <laughs> I'm honestly just like laughing at how embarrassing this is. Okay, we're going to pivot. Decays, commands. Some apologies to Lux Ferris are in order that I really did try on this. The concept is just really messy. The pivot plan is reasonable, though. Hey, I'm going to cut an exploration and a mock diamond. I don't think this matchup's about speed as much as it's about stability. 
My tutors, my card draw, my protection all still in. Okay, a bunch of land drops, no protection. A, B, but the B is terrible. I think I'm going to mulligan this. I want to be a little more pushy, knowing that they're a big dirtily control deck. I'm going to bottom one of the Uraborgs here. I know they play Wasteland. Is that information useful? I'm holding Urborg. I think I will get Basic Forest here. Run out the coffers. That's my worst land. If they want to Wasteland one of them, they can have that one. I hope they wait on the Wasteland until I can have Rotation up. It's also a non-threatening land. Cool. All right, a removal spell spent on something that's not Witherbloom Apprentice. Oh, you don't say. All right, I'm just going to drop the homie here. I don't think trying to double spell in the future is any better than just casting it now. Because if they play standstill, I'm in the garbage. And I can't protect this thing next turn or this turn. I can't play them both next turn unless I draw a land. Tundra Plains. Oh, Life from the Loam. What do I do with this? I could just cast it. That's something I could do with it. It also drains them for one. And it still represents Chain of Smog. What could they do here? Snapcaster Mage? I'm just going to attack. Yeah, I wonder if Sajiri Step should actually be in the pivot plan. Instead, Brainstorm. Maybe I'm a coward and I'm just supposed to jam this. Drawing the Life from the Loam gave me false hope that there is another plan emerging. Brainstorm, no shuffle. There's a shuffle. But they had to redraw one of those cards. Or got to redraw one of those cards, depending on who you ask. Scroll of Fate. Okay, manifest a card face down. That's fine. They are now tapped out. Let's find a Veil or a Thoughtseize off of this underground mortuary. Two looks at six outs here. Easy game. Veil on top. Don't dredge loam. Veil of Summer. They need two forces here, or one solitude. A force pitching stifle. Does crop rotation do anything? Like, I'm just thinking if there's, like, any weird thing I can get them on the hook for, trick them into caring about. Oh, we've seen days. I'm not going to fucking crop rotation. All right, drain you for one, and chain of smog. Can we do it? Did they have the double force? They did indeed. Okay. Force pitching standstill, and this can make two twos all day. I can crop rotate in my next upkeep to play around days, and Urza Saga will still be at chapter two. I don't have to do it now. Ooh, look at this creepy manifest. Duskmorn art already on Magic Online. That set is not released yet. Okay, in my upkeep, crop rotation, which drains them for one. Urza Saga pivot, take me home. Go straight to chapter two because it happens in the main phase. I will not be dredging loam. I will dredge loam next turn and keep the saga machine rolling. Oh, if I dredged loam, I would have had stuff to discard to Mox Diamond. Though so that takes off the possibility of just ripping chain. This brainstorm came off the top because the manifest was the last card in their hand. And they manifested another card from hand. I wonder if they actually have creatures in here. Like, is there a sick juke where just one of these is a Phyrexian Dreadnought? In addition to everything else that's going on in this deck? I would be very impressed if true. Thrilled, even. One Manifest is attacking me. Other tapping mana. It looks like Prismatic Ending. Bummer. Boo. The incidental drains from just dredging loam would have been a win con eventually, if they were dirtily enough. And I am going to fetch my basic swamp. Let's just get that out here. Can I draw... I'm going to dredge loam. Make another one of these. Did I leave in a candle? Nope. Embarrassing. I will just delete one of these straight into the graveyard. Loam or Saga Forest, other thing. They have no cards in hand. Can't even daze this one. Play out Saga. And my plan will be to have bigger creatures than them starting next turn. I don't want to trade off when I could just be bigger next turn. They got the Scroll of Fate. Machine rolling. I've got life from the loam rolling. Definitely should have dredged loam last turn, though. Or it would have worked out better, knowing what I know now, to have dredged loam last turn. That doesn't mean I definitely should have done it. Thoughtseize is mostly blank because of the scroll of fate. Might be good next turn, though. Cycling timeless dragon. All right. They can have a 4-4 four, four instead of a 2-2 two, two now. A dragon's in. 
that is going to be smaller than my constructs. I'm going to have four five fives. End of turn, make a construct. On my turn, I will dredge loam. Make another construct. I will tutor a mox diamond effectively this time. The thought seizing them really doesn't matter. Like from the loam, replay saga. Okay, what does an attack look like here? I get three five fives to attack. They can double block two of them. Their board dies, or I lose two constructs. They're down to one manifest. I'm going to swing. My concern here is if nobody draws another relevant card, my saga will beat their scroll of fate. But if they just draw like a dress down, the nightmare scenario, a wrath of the skies, a swords to plowshares, this all of that gets really hairy. Okay, they are lining up the block that I thought they would. This results in me with two constructs and then with one manifest. There's six life. Days and standstill died. And then I get to attack with two four fours next turn. Not going to dredge loam. Ooh. Surprise damage. Attack. They can double block one of these and go to two. Or, yeah, they can double block one of these and go to two. If the card in their hand is a spell, then they don't have two blockers. Them being at one card is what's keeping me alive here. Okay. I will end up killing both of these unless one flips into a creature. Okay, they are dead on board. And if I dredge loam and go wither bloom, thoughtsies, life from the loam, they're dead to that too. So they have to beat this and my hand that they don't know about. Cool. All right. The lands part of the deck finally kicked in. Uh, I actually think I want a candelabra in because in a situation like that, getting candelabra with enough lands in play, I can make two constructs. Per turn with Ursa Saga, just untap it and make another one. That's cool. That was fun. I liked that a lot, actually. That was my favorite game of the league so far. Now they know about Wither Bloom Apprentice. They know about the Juke. In paper, I'd be grabbing 12 cards and pretending to sideboard another giant chunk out and make trying to be very obvious about it, but I'd actually submit the same deck again. They did have some use of their graveyard. I could cut a Coffers and leave Bajuka Bog in. Yeah, I'm not really doing coffers stuff. Okay, here we go. This is the plan. Okay. I don't hate this. Standstill is also a giant liability now that they know Urza Saga's in my deck. If you play Standstill and I play Urza Saga, you look really stupid. And I know that because I was the one who cast Urza Saga or cast Standstill into an Urza Saga metagame for way longer than I should have. Okay. Oh, uh, I just got a pop-up that. Tamio Collector of Tales has been replaced with Kin and Bonder Pottergy due to an issue with Tamio in the Vintage Cube. All right, that doesn't affect me right now. Thanks for letting me know, though. And knowing this deck plays Prismatic Ending and could play Wrath of the Skies, but also knowing the deck plays Days and Stubborn Denial, interesting push-pull on when to play this Mox Diamond. A Hoistland. I'm fine getting Wastelanded if they want to attack. Oh, we also saw Stifle pitched off a of Force of Will. That's embarrassing. That would have been really bad. Okay, I'm just going to fetch this. If they want to waste this, knowing that Urza Saga's in my deck and Life from the Loam's in my deck, go nuts. All right, yeah, just... It didn't even wait for the Surveil. They're just like, yeah, I want that. Okay, I don't think I need a second Veil of Summer here. I found a Bayou, and I will simply pass the turn. I don't know how many Wastelands they play, or how many they're going to have. I mean, there's two. That's probably why they were so aggressive about the first one, not worried about Saga when you have the second one in the bank. I'm going to play Basic Forest here. That might dissuade them from Wastelanding if they know I have a stable mana source. I also don't care if they Wasteland here. That's another important factor. Tundra fetched in the end step. Dress down. Deployed. Ooh. Is this actually a Dreadnought deck after all this? That would make sense with the Daze and the Stubborn Denial. I'm going to go after the... Oh, the Stifle too. Yeah, I should have put this together. I'm going to go after the Dress Down rather than the Dreadnought. They could still Stifle this in, but at least they don't get two of them. Moment of Truth. Yeah, they're sacking a permanent with that cost with 12 or more power. We did it. The Dress Down replaced itself, so that wasn't like a great exchange, but at least they don't have that stupid card in play. Okay. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, Mox Diamond. I'm going to send an Infernal Contract with Veil back up here. Load me up. And I did get loaded up. 
I'm going to cast Exploration. They might have a soft counter, but if they want to use it on this, that's fine. Sure. Deal. Okay. Cool. Uh, I suddenly have Urza Saga available to me. I have the route to the combo. They do have that wasteland in play. That's frustrating. I'm able to go after my Urborg, thinking that's important. Cycling Timeless Dragon. Okay. So this is more of a like pre-modern style dread still deck. Uh, I I played a lot of Dreadnought and I've played a lot of Standstill on this channel and in life. And I I don't know that I've if I've combined the two actually. Okay, Prismatic Ending got my Mox. Another contract. We could just go again. Or I could play Urza Saga, hold up crop rotation. I can do both. I don't think I want to draw another four cards here. Because that would put me to nine cards in hand, and I only have two hits for that in my deck, the Mox Diamonds. I'm actually going to bog this Timeless Dragon out of here. They're sitting on the Wasteland. The longer I can play around that, the better. And really, the play around that is probably play it, and when they waste it, crop rotate it into the other one. Another Timeless Dragon. Oh no, my bog. At nine life, I have to respect a 4 4 a lot. And at any point, if I draw. The boy, we can send it. Urza Saga is in. And this puts them in the spot where if they're going to wasteland me, they need to come up with another land. I could have also beseeched the mirror and bargained away the Saga before they had a chance to waste it. But I think having the crop rotation double veil, maybe this puts them off curve so they can't put the 4-4 into play. The seesaw. I like all that. The tightest spot to wasteland me is in my upkeep with the make saga trigger or make constructs trigger on the stack. Here we are. Are they on the level? No. All right. I'm going to get at least one construct. But if they have another round of dress downs, that doesn't matter. But I'm chilling. Pass the turn. I could also chain up smog them. And then when they send it back at me, cast Veil of Summer. That line exists. The fair chain of smog, as Garfield intended. Cycling a third Timeless Dragon, still ignoring Urza Saga. This makes me think that they have access to Dress Down. They just don't seem worried about this at all. And confirmed. There it is. That's the Dress Down. They've got five cards in hand. If they Wasteland Saga right now, I get nothing. In the end step, Dress Down will die and I can make Constructs then. Dreadnought resolves. Let's see if they have the, the Wasteland in mind here. Trigger. Okay, that's gone. I can make constructs. Construct. Corrupt decay. That rules. Construct. Tutor up Candelabra of Taunos, because I don't have any lands in my hand. Corrupt decay. Green, black. Just the perfect draw that I had the whole time. Don't worry about it. And suddenly, flipping the script. Dress down still gets me here, but they took three. Oh my goodness, things are happening. They're wastelanding their own tundra. Am I going to get balanced? What's going on here? Price of progress. Wow, am I going to get double popped out of this deck? I'm at three. That was cool. I was not playing around price of progress, that's for sure. Sick. All right, got me with the double pop at the end. Suddenly a burn deck just got me for 12. I don't feel bad about losing to that because we did... A lot of cool stuff that game. On to the final round. I'm on the play in the final round. I played against this opponent yesterday and they were on Red Stompy. What do I do with that information? Do I think one Urza Saga will beat this player? If they don't have Blood Moon, it might. A Mox Diamond, discard a Bayou. Play Bayou. Play Exploration. Play Basic Swamp. And pass. I can spin up Saga, make a 2-2, then a 3-3, then a then two four fours, and hopefully overpower whatever they're up to. If they Blood Moon me, I am dead. <laughs> Those are the modes. A crop rotation in the end step. There's a Saga get in. Bubbling Muck. All right. We got lines on the combo. If they Blood Moon this turn, I get a 2-2 two -two for the road. And then Bubbling Muck is very bad, because I'm only going to have one Swamp the rest of the game. I'm sure people in the comments are like, why don't you play one Besaju? And it's like, I'll find room for it, I don't know. Oh wow, alright. 
a game plan is materializing here. It's an ugly one, but it works. Uh, and my opponent missed a whole ass land drop over there. I don't know what's going on. Are they on Ruby Storm today instead of Red Prison? And they're just waiting to kill me all at once? And they're dead in two hits if they don't figure this out. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but we won a game one. Count it. Count it. I won a game one in a perfectly normal way that you'd expect. But I won a game with the, the combo in. The other combo in. Not the, not the good one. Okay, uh, if we are against Moon Stompy, there's basically no universe where I'm ever tapping multiple Cabal Coffers in a turn. Do I leave in the Extanguinate for value? That might be a thing, actually. This does map out in a way that lets me keep Exsanguinate, and it's not a complete abomination. Value Exsanguinate is on the table. Sometimes you just need to do a couple damage or gain a few life to flip the race in a deck like this. And it's cool because they think I'm lands. They didn't even see the Beseech the Mirror in my hand or the Bubbling Muck. I will keep this both basics, Chain of Smog. I'm in. Can ult a 5. Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, enters tapped. Come on, 1 up Wasteland. Mox Diamond. Okay. Um, I could discard my Forest to that. Oh, I have Life from Loam. I can do everything here. Okay, so Forest Exploration, Play Bayou. Play Mox Diamond, pick it back up. Okay, yep. Yeah. Forest. Exploration. Mox Diamond. Discard Basic Swamp. Play Bayou. Life from the Loam. Battle Cruiser operational. It wasn't quite the turn one Infernal Contract. That would have been sweet, but it's a turn two Infernal Contract with Mana still up. Contracting versus this deck could be dangerous. I would just die to Broadside Bombardiers on the flip back. Volcanic Fissure. Zapped it in. They have plans of a spell this turn. Please play Chalice of the Void. Uh, all right, Blood Moon's in. If I draw Wither Bloom Apprentice, I win. Don't trudge alone. Exploration. Okay, another one of those. Oh, this is interesting. I can just Chain of Smog them, and they have no cards in their hand and two mana to play with. I lose my contract, but I'm never casting that anyway. Who's favored? Them. Both of us Hellbent. I have Life from the Loam that doesn't help. What does this game actually look like? This Ursa Saga, I can't dredge into Ursa Saga and play the game because that's not how Blood Moon works. Rough Decay is still in my deck. Yeah, I don't think trying to screw them is the play. I think keeping my AB and having my Win the Game button available is the play. Vexing Bauble, I don't care about that. They got lots of them. Still not dredging Loam, <laughs> Infernal Contract. It would have been nice to resolve one of these before the Blood Moon hit. Just four more cards to work with. They're starting to sack baubles and reload. They found land number three. Now I'm more inclined to Chain of Smog them. Come on, homie. Draw the Apprentice. Candelabra. Oh, that fixes my mana. I talked about this kind of as a joke earlier, but it, it rules here. Okay, so I could go black, black, on tap of the Swamp using the forest oh my goodness actually as garfield intended firing infernal contract let's see if i die on the spot to broadside bombardiers okay, four cards in hand one of them is chain of smog i get to play some lands but i've used my black already one two three four five six okay let's see if they have a threat and what it is table and mirror breaker that one doesn't kill me that quick if I contract again, I'm at five. Come on, Apprentice. Beseech the Mirror. That can be an Apprentice. All right. Uh, okay. I'm so excited about this nonsense with the, the Candelabra actually beating Blood Moon. Okay, black, black, green. And then one, two, Candelabra untap. Use the red to make black and green again. And then Beseech with no bargain. Put the Apprentice in my hand. And I've got the win for next turn. Apprentice in the grip. Pass. Fingers crossed. This became weirdly exciting. Hey, it's a big turn for Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's got to deliver eight damage. I even beat Trinisphere. I beat Chalice. I don't beat Chalice on two, but I don't think they've seen anything that costs two yet. They just dumped a dead gone. They don't know about the juke. 
or they have it covered. Those are the two options. Can I chain them twice? Or chain them once they send it back, then I decline to send it back again? I can. Okay. Don't dredge loam. I drew a blast zone. Okay, so it's black green for the apprentice, black colorless for the chain, untap lands. If I chain them first, I still have black, black, green. Okay, I'm going to chain them. I'll get the two cards out of their hand. And then I'll discard two irrelevant cards. And then I'll win. They have one redraw off of Vexing Bobble here to save them. Mountain and Dead gone. They did do it. They did have it. And this is just copied. It's not cast the copy, so Vexing Bobble doesn't counter it. Okay, I'm going to discard Blast Zone and Infernal Contract. And I will not continue the chain. And then... Green, red, red, candelabra, untap the basics, green, black, witherbloom apprentice, green, black, chain of smog. They got one, one rip here, one rip to rule them all. Bring you for one. Moment of truth. They're going to at least let me discard once first. I would like to copy the spell. Same targets. Now is the time to draw your card. They're passing priority, though. Are they trying to time me out, or do they not see the bobble redraw? This is infinite. Okay. Well, we win. Wow! A 2-3 and three record in this league. I am ecstatic with that result. I am not ecstatic about the main deck. Most of the wins came from the sideboard plan. Uh, we got one main deck win, but it was just a... Accelerated Urza Saga versus an opponent who kept a one lander. I don't know what happened there, but that's how we won a game one. The main deck definitely needs some work. The balance of both having, you probably need reasonably four or five lands at least to really do the thing. And then you also need Candelabra and Bubbling Muck. And then you also need to find your Exsanguinate after untapping these things multiple times. This would take a full rebuild to figure out. You probably, it would honestly probably be easier to fit some sort of like LED Stormline into a Golgari lands deck than it is to actually figure out how to drain life your opponent for 20 in the modern era of Magic. There are, of course, decks like the Spanish Inquisition or Iggy Pop from the history of Legacy that actually were just mono black or Golgari Storm decks and you could build those packages in here, but Lux Ferris asked specifically for Drain Life to be the win con, and I shot a shot at it. I put way more work into this than I do in to most of the decks that I build and brew with on the channel. Like I probably put twice as much time into making this video as I do the average video that you view on the channel and still came up short. Maybe if you don't exploration and you don't life from the loam and just these are like removal spells or ways to make the game just take longer and rather than trying to get lands out faster you make the game take longer and combo eventually maybe i should be looking at cards that aren't green or black in the beseech package like if i beseech for like factor fiction i don't know just trying to think of how i can actually make inferno contract into a card i'm happy to play with though there were multiple times where just BBB draw four came up and it was good in these leagues when you're under no pressure. This is actually an insane rate. Just got to solve for if you have 12 mana in your pool and resolve a bargain to beseech the mirror, you should not be conceding, which is something that did happen in this league. And uh, figuring that out would be the sauce. Sorry, I didn't quite crack it, but I am stoked to come out with a two and three record. I have done worse with better decks. Lux Ferris, thank you for this challenge. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.